selecting specification under the NI700 component brings up the main specification page where you can set the global NI700 parameters. These include settings such as the cache line size for systems with A-slide interfaces, the power domain that will contain the config and iBlock instance storing the global configuration registers, the memory map offset for the NI700 configuration registers, the cell size used on the canvas, the maximum allowable remap ID in the memory map, and legacy or per byte method for specifying user signals. If you change this to per byte, then the relevant section in the user signals will become editable. You can also set here the various control options for the automated architecture generation engine and some dedicated parameters that are automatically assigned by the engine but can be modified if you want to render the design with different settings. On the right side, you will find the settings for specifying the user signal widths on the different AXI and AHB channels. All those different settings include tooltips as well that provide detailed explanation and help understanding how they affect the design. These will be displayed if you hover your mouse above a particular option. The specification has multiple subsections where you need to fill the different NI700 design choices that would drive the automated architecture engine flow to generate a specific NI700 topology. Those high-level settings will also be enforced by design rule checks when you are using the canvas to create your topology manually. On the top right corner of the main specification page, you have the icons for launching the different automation flows, which are the following from left to right. Generate a YML file storing the complete NI700 component configuration, including both the specification options and the created topology. Run the built-in specification-related design rule checks. Generate an architecture from the specification. Run the built-in architecture-related design rule checks. Generate the NI700 deliverables based on the created architecture. These icons are available from all specification subsections and from the canvas editor as well. In the domains section, you can specify the different voltage, power and clock domains within your NI700 and also the relationships between the specified clocks. You can use the tabs to navigate between the different domain types. A voltage domain can include multiple power domains and a power domain can include multiple clock domains. Once you selected the appropriate tab, you can add or remove domains using the plus and X icons on the top right. In this example, we will specify two power domains and four clock domains. When specifying to add the clock domain, a small wizard will appear in which you can specify the frequency, the corresponding power domain and the relationships to other clocks in the specification that can be synchronous, asynchronous or no crossing allowed. Here we will assign clock 0 and clock 2 to power domain 0 and clock 1 and clock 3 to power domain 1. All clocks will be specified as asynchronous to each other. The power and clock domain settings will drive the architecture engine flow to insert PCDC or power and clock domain crossing blocks at the appropriate places in the design. You can use the clock relations tab to view and modify the specified clock relationships or to add or remove any of them. Now that we specified our power and clock domains, the next step is to add the necessary boundary interfaces to our NI700 component. If we switch to the interfaces section, the different slave and master interfaces can be added under the corresponding tab. In the default protocol option, you can specify a default protocol to be assigned to newly created interfaces. For any interface, you can set the appropriate name, protocol and clock domain in the interfaces table, while further attributes and protocol related settings can be applied on the corresponding editor on the right side. In this example, on the slave interface side, we will add two AXI5 interfaces that will be assigned to clock 0 and two ACE5 light interfaces that will be assigned to clock 1.
on the master interface side, we will add two AXI5 and an ASLIFE interface that will be assigned to clock 2, and an AHB5 and two APB4 interfaces that will be assigned to clock 3. One key thing to highlight here is that due to the low bandwidth expected on APB interfaces, it is supported to have a shared PMNI block in the architecture for multiple APB master interfaces. In order to enable this, each APB master interface needs to be assigned to a so-called APB group that represents a PMNI block in the generated architecture. The APB master interfaces that are assigned to the same APB group will be connected to the same PMNI block. APB groups need to be specified under the groups subsection of the specification. As you can see, there is another tab here for stripe groups and a dedicated subsection for logical groups, but let's come back to those later. Regarding APB groups, once we specified one and assigned it to a clock domain, further properties such as assigning master interfaces to this group, setting the starvation period, and enabling integrated device management can be set in the corresponding editor on the right side. Here, we will assign both APB master interfaces to our single APB group. This will also update the corresponding attributes in the interface settings. Stripe groups can be used to create an address region in the memory map that will alternately target different master interfaces by a specific striping granule. This can be useful if you want to spread access to multiple slaves that might return data faster than focusing the access to a single slave, or if you want to spread the access load more balanced across the slaves, for example, to achieve load balancing across multiple memory ports. When specifying a new stripe group, you will need to assign the corresponding master interfaces in the interface ref section. Then you will also specify the stripe size that can be set between 128 bytes and 4 kilobytes according to the powers of 2. Here, we will add master interface 0 and master interface 1 to the stripe group and apply a stripe size of 1 kilobyte. A stripe group will be handled as an individual target in the path matrix where you can specify which slave interfaces can access that striped memory region, and in your memory maps, you can map it as a target at a specified base address. Next, we will create our memory maps. It is possible to create a unique memory map for each slave interface, or you can also choose to create a shared one for all of your slave interfaces. In such case, all the masters in your system will have the same view of functional memory that is accessible through the NI700. The overall visibility will be defined by the path matrix where you will specify the actual physical connectivity between slave interfaces and master interfaces. The steps are the following. First, you will need to add your memory maps in the memory map section. Then for each, assign the slave interfaces that share that memory map. Finally, map all master interfaces and other targets into the corresponding memory maps at the required offsets and ranges. It is also possible to specify up to 8 remap states for each block in your memory maps. The actual memory map layout for each remap state can be viewed using the remap vector. If you activate multiple remap states at the same time, then the one on the lowest bit position will take effect. Here, we will set up a single memory map that will be shared among all slave interfaces. We will add all the available targets to the memory map and go with the default offsets and ranges for each, although you are free to modify those if you want. As you can see, the previously specified stripe group will also appear as the target at the highest offset. To demonstrate remaps, Let's also specify some remap states. Here, as remap state 0, we will hide the last four targets in the memory map by specifying them as no target.
as you can see, selecting remap pin 0 will show under the result target section how the memory map would look like if we programmed remap state 0. Then, under the Pass section, we can define the physical connectivity between slave interfaces and master interfaces. You can specify more paths at the same time using the right-click menu from an interface, or you can also enable connections one by one in the path matrix. Disabling the Edit Mode option will make the matrix read-only, while selecting a path will bring up the corresponding traffic profile settings on the right. In the specification, you can define traffic profiles and traffic use cases that can drive the architecture engine flow to generate a design that meets the specified requirements. This can be a good starting point to ensure that your generated design will meet your bandwidth requirements. Under specification traffic, you can specify standard traffic profiles that will be passed to the architecture generation engine. In those standard traffic profiles, you can set the average bandwidth that you want your design to support when the paths are operating together concurrently, and also the peak bandwidth to be supported on a path-by-path -path basis. In addition, you will also notice that under the traffic section, you can further specify so-called traffic use cases that can represent different modes of operation that your design might be in. Those traffic use cases allow you to specify which set of devices in your system will be operating together. In a certain use case, you can specify a set of scenarios that will define whether you got read or write requests from particular sources and which of the destinations they are active to at the same time. One of the goals for the architecture generation engine is to fulfill the specified requirements or use cases so to support certain scenarios happening just by themselves or several scenarios happening together. In this example, we set up two scenarios. In scenario 0, S0 and S1 slave interfaces are both sending write requests to M0 master interface, while in scenario 1, S0 is sending read requests to M0 and M1. We then link both scenario 0 and scenario 1 to use case 0, which means that we need our design to support scenario 0 and scenario 1 happening together. Now that we specified all the required specification options, let's switch to the canvas editor. You can also run the built-in design rule checks from the canvas toolbar and make sure your specification doesn't contain any errors prior to starting to create the internal architecture. In case any error is found, you will get notified by a pop-up message and you can check the details in the console and in the dedicated problems tab. Here you have all your created slave interfaces represented by green rectangles and your master interfaces represented by red rectangles. If you hover your mouse above any of them, you can see which actual interface it belongs to, and also some additional attributes such as the corresponding protocol, clock, power and voltage domain, or resource plane. The NI700 creation flow is physically aware, so you will need to define some physical properties for your SOC to build the NI700 architecture. Therefore, on the canvas, it is necessary to first create appropriate system blocks from the right-click menu, and assign each specified boundary interface to a block first. Each block can represent, for example, a particular component in your SOC. Areas that are reserved for the placement of further system components or where you cannot put any internal blocks or connectivity can be marked as unroutable areas.
the interfaces which are physically close to each other on your SOC or are coming from the same component will be assigned to the same system block. Once the boundary interfaces have all been assigned to their corresponding system blocks accordingly, you can run the automated architecture engine flow using the appropriate icon from the toolbar. This will generate a proper architecture, including all the necessary internal blocks and connectivity based on the high-level options that you specified under the specification.